Hi, today I'm reviewing the Peak and Yield Calming Deep Moisture Toner. And really quick, I just want to say, purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time to sponsor ads or videos, so if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsb.com, check my Patreon community, or click on the links below. Okay, so I reviewed the moisturizer uh, in this line a couple weeks ago, so I thought I'd finally get to do the toner, which I've been testing out and uh, so far enjoying. Really nice brand overall and has some really nice products. Can be a little hit or miss, so keep that in mind. Not everything is totally very sensitive skin friendly, but a lot of it is. So they say, formulated for acne prone skin, the soothing toner comes with white willow bark extract to control excessive sebum production. HA and PHA for gentle exfoliation, as well as five kinds of sick extracts to calm irritations. I got you there, because I thought, I bet you guys thought I was going to say five kinds of hyaluronic acid, right? Because that's what they all do. Five kinds of different hyaluronic acid. Woohoo, yay, get excited. No, no, Sika, it's the way to go. To calm irritations. For optimal results, apply generously onto cleanse face on a daily basis. Obviously, you're going to say generously. Use the whole bottle up in one use so then you can buy another bottle. Okay, I'm getting really snarky and I don't mean to because it's overall a good product. So, okay, let's get to my first criteria. Packaging, uh, no issues with the packaging, although I, I'm not a crazy fan of the clear bottle packaging. Especially when it does contain those centella ingredients, which are antioxidants, which can be prone to de degrade in turn and exposure to light or air. So keep it in the cabinet when you're not using it. Uh, in terms of denatured drying types of alcohol, it does not contain any of those. We get to fragrance and it's kind of, it's almost like I need a half point. I do. Cameraman 2023, we need to bring in the half point criteria. Nope. What? We need it because in this situation, it's not necessarily something that doesn't have a scent to it really. It might have a very, very light herbal scent, which is barely noticeable. It does contain tea tree extract, which uh, can be an anti-acne ingredient, uh, but it also can give products a light herbal scent. Uh, the oil, if it were tea tree oil, it'd be much stronger, much more noticeable. So, uh, and then also contains sage leaf extract, which is surfactant that can also give things light scent. So, um, with this, I really don't notice any scent. So I'd like to the opportunity to give things a half scent because those two ingredients aren't nearly as irritating as bergamot oil, lemon peel oil, citrus oil, fragrance, whatever other crap they could stick in there. So I think 2023, we need to bring in the half point because I don't necessarily think they should fully be fully docked for that. But anyway. Especially when tea tree extract can be beneficial. So anyway, okay. On to my fourth criteria, which is uh, manufacturing location. This is made in Korea, so no issues with that. I'll do a quick pH test uh, of this. Da -da -da -da. And the pH of this is, I would say, just a touch under 5. Maybe 4.5. And no garbage. So there we go. Okay, so ease of use, uh, after cleansing, you can either apply it with a cotton pad and then smooth it over your skin, or you can pat it onto skin. Um, this brand doesn't really specifically say which way to use it. Um, for me, if I'm gonna use this in my morning routine, I'm gonna pat it onto skin after cleansing. If I'm using it in my evening routine, I'm gonna use a cotton pad with this just to remove any leftover residue, makeup, sunscreen, oil, whatever, that the cleansers might not have gotten. Sometimes I'll notice cleansers, some, some of them don't do the best job. So, and then uh, I recommend applying your serum immediately after this, before it dries, because it does actually contain uh, some humectants in here. So anyway, actually several forms of hyaluronic acid. I shouldn't have ripped on them, because then look, it came true. We've got hy hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid hydroxypolytrimium hyaluronic, sodium hyaluronic, cross polymer, sodium acetylated hyaluronic. So it does ironically include five forms of hyaluronic acid. <laughs> Why? Why? Anyway, so uh, easy to use, just do recommend moving on, especially if you live in a drier area of drier skin. My skin is super dry right now. So, okay, so easy to use, no issues with that. So let's get to the beneficial ingredients. I think that's another thing we might change in 2023. I might move the ingredients and antioxidants to the end of the um, list. If you have thoughts on it, leave a comment. I'm just thinking about moving it to the end of the list just because. So, okay. 
Antioxidants and beneficial ingredients. So we've got panthenol, good skin soothing, hydrating, wound healing ingredient. We've got glucolactalone, which is a good exfoliant, gentle. It's also an antioxidant, gently lifts off dead skin cells from the skin surface, making skin smooth and even. Although, yeah, um, in the long term, it can provide some anti-aging benefits, but not quite as good as like glycolic acid or lactic acid. Those are some really good anti-aging exfoliants. Um, also a great hydrating ingredient and may help with uh, repairing the skin barrier. Then we've got that willow bark extract, soothing ingredient, astringent, close chemical relative to salicylic acid. Due to its salicin content, willow bark is often touted as a natural alternative to salicylic acid, though it might not be quite as effective. And probably with the pH being around where it is, 4-ish, 4.5, might not be quite as exfoliating as it is probably hydrating, especially that ingredient. Um, okay, then we've got honeysuckle flower extract, which is a soothing ingredient, antimicrobial ingredient. A lot of K-Beauty products use that ingredient uh, more as a preservative. Then we've got sodium hyaluronate, which is a humectant. Then we've got centella asiatica, soothing, hydrating, antioxidant ingredient. We've got subaki extract, which is a nice hydrating ingredient. Then we've got all those hyaluronic acid versions that I was kind of joking about. Yeah, they showed up. Funny how that happens. Which are all humectants. Okay, then we've got... Uh, Asiatic acid, asiaticoside, matacasic acid, and matacasicide, which are all compounds from Centella asiatica that help with wound healing, skin soothing, antioxidant, hydrating, and some of them, uh, specifically matacasic acid, may help with potential collagen synthesis, which is what you want to happen, especially as you get older, the less collagen you have in your skin, the less collagen you have, the less firm it is, the more times you will see wrinkles and fine lines. You can't just apply a product with collagen in it and expect it to make collagen. Collagen doesn't work that way. It works as a hydrating ingredient, but you can't just apply it to skin. You need it to work to make collagen, which that's why some ingredients can do that. Okay, then we've got betaine, which is a sugar derived, uh, sugar beet derived humectant. And then finally, we've got hydroxyacetophenone, which is an antioxidant preservative combo. So Nice list of antioxidants, soothing ingredients, and humectants. Very heavy on the humectants. So no issues at all with that. Okay, in terms of animal testing, uh, this brand is cruelty-free as of today. In the past, I've discussed moving into China. I believe they didn't do that, but you never really know. So as of today, they're cruelty-free. Tomorrow, I don't know. You never know. Okay, in terms of performance, it does a nice job um, hydrating, calming the skin. Uh, does help a little bit with redness, not as much as some other toners might, but it does help a little bit with some of those centella derivatives. Uh, it's a nice toner. It For me, it's not a must-have. It's not something I feel like I'm super excited to go finish and repurchase, but a lot of people absolutely love it. It has a lot of five-star reviews, so that's always good. Uh, probably very mild for exfoliating. I really, to be honest, in terms of the exfoliation benefits of it, I didn't really notice any of those, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just very, very gentle. But if you use it every day or have sensitive skin, it might be a nice option. Um, and then the nice thing for acne prone skin, there's no ingredients of note. So that is wonderful for acne prone skin. Um, in terms of the price, so this is a full size, what is it? Uh, 5.3 ounces, 150 milliliters of retails for about $17. Unless you get on sale, it's on sale a lot. So, and if you pat it on your skin, a little bit of it will go a long way. Uh, in terms of the it factor, it's not a must have for me. It's a decent toner. Not one I see myself going out to repurchase. Uh, I'm just not a big, you know, if this had five other ingredients instead of those hyaluronic acid versions, I might be a little more excited about it. Maybe throw in some superoxide dismutase or uh, vitamin C derivative or azelaic acid or whatever. Anything except those uh, might get me a little more excited about it. But overall, it's still a decent toner that seems to work well for a lot of people. So nothing wrong with that. Um, okay, with a 10 being a perfect score, of this one an 8. It's decent. Works well for a lot of people. Not offensive in any way. Just not quite uh, lacking that luster it factor must have for me. But... Um, a lot of people love it, so nothing wrong with that. Um, anyway, interested hearing from you guys. If you had a chance to check this one out yet or not, and if you have what your thoughts are, so leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys, and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.